This video will either clear up a lot of concepts you might be confused on, or it might actually mess up your brain a little bit more. Hopefully it clears up the concepts. But I, I ran into a blog post one time where the guy said, there is only one coordinate space. And I read that and I thought, what is he talking about? There's not more, there's not one coordinate space, there's more than one coordinate space. We have the model coordinate space. For example, here is our model. It has a positive x and a positive z, but we hit the model with the model to world transformation matrix. We can do a little bit of a translate, a little bit of a translate, maybe a little bit of a rotate, whatever. But now we have two coordinate spaces. We have the models where Positive x is this direction, positive z is now this direction. And we have the world, the red coordinate space, where positive x is here, negative, or positive z is here. The origin for the world is right here. The origin for the sphere is right here. There are two coordinate spaces. And then you've seen me move the world around the camera several times. Let's do it again. We shall uh, push our eye in the positive z direction. That'll move the world out away from the camera. And we... We'll change what the eye is looking at, so that'll rotate the world a little bit. And now we have three coordinate spaces. We have the coordinate space for the sphere. Here's the positive x, positive z. Coordinate space for the world. I can't remember where the origin is. Let's see the origins here. I might be wrong. But the world has a, a coordinate space as well. That's the red grid here. And then the view or the camera, it has its own coordinate space, which is the white coordinate space. That's three coordinate spaces. And so when I read that blog post, I thought, there's not one coordinate space, there's three. Well, how did we get three coordinate spaces? The way we got three coordinate spaces is by doing two transformations, one from the model to the world, and another from the world, from world into the view. And that gave us these three coordinate spaces. And yes, that works. If you like understanding it that way, that's fine. But I also like this other guy's approach where he says, you know, there's really only one coordinate space. And it's the global coordinate space. I almost want to say it's the world coordinate space, but it's just the one coordinate space. Let me see if I can illustrate where I think this person was going. I have to put everything back into position. I'm going to slide this. And slide. Ah, don't blink. Okay, I have the sphere back into position here. and Really, the sphere is made up of vertices. And the vertices, you can see the different colors of the vertices, kind of. That's why we have this rainbow thing. So there's a vector for every vertice. If you can pretend that you're looking through the sphere, the sphere is semi-transparent, maybe a glass ball, if you would. The origin of the sphere is right here in the center of the sphere. And then there's all these little vectors coming up to make these vertices. There's a green one here. There's a red one here. Looks like there's kind of a yellowish, brownish, purplish thing. Purple one... I don't even know what color that is. I'm not going to guess. But you see all these vectors coming off, making the vertices that make up the sphere. The sphere is more like an, a ball at Epcot. If you go to Epcot, and they have that kind of ballish looking thing, but it really has polygons for sides. Anyway, same idea here. Let's pick on one of these vectors. I just want to pick on one of these vectors. And I kind of like this purple one. So here's the origin of our sphere. And there's a vector coming off representing this vertex position. And we're going to hit the sphere with the sphere's quote-unquote world, model-to-world transformation matrix. So let's come here. Oh, I just deleted my vertex. Let me put the vertex back in. Origin of the sphere. Here's the vertex. Let's, let's do our transformation on the sphere. We'll translate it. And we shall translate it. And we can do a rotation a little bit, maybe another... Rotation, doesn't really matter. Scale, whatever. We hit the sphere with this model-to-world transformation matrix. Well, what did we really do? What did we really do? We transformed this green vector that was pointing at our purple vertex. We actually transformed that vector like this. Okay, that vector went from pointing out here to pointing over here. If you go look at my vector videos in the Game Engine Programming Playlist, you understand we transform vectors. We change them. Well, what happens when I do the world-to-view transformation matrix? I grab this matrix and I start mucking around with the parameters. So let's send our camera further on the Z direction. That'll push the world out. And we can change what our, our eye position, maybe change our look at a little bit. Somehow, it doesn't really matter. Well, what did we just do? We took our purple vertex and put it right here. So this vector 
represented our purple vertex. We hit it with this matrix, which transformed that vector to right here. And then we hit it again with this matrix, which further transformed that vertex, or that vector, to right there. Not a very straight vector, but hopefully you get the idea. There's a, the, the vector now is that. Okay, there's one coordinate space. In fact, I can actually say don't show the world. And you can see the one coordinate space. It's the white coordinate space. You might think that's the view coordinate space, but no, it is the one and only coordinate space. All we're doing is changing these vectors, all the vectors to all these vertices. We're just transforming them to get our sphere where we want to. And this is one of the reasons why the world rotates around the camera. To make the math easy for the camera to do a perspective projection, we said the camera will be at the origin of the camera space. Well, it's really at the origin of the global coordinate space. And if I want the camera to see anything out here, I have to move those objects in front of the camera. And that's why we move the entire world in front of the camera instead of moving the camera into the world. And so that's where I think this guy was coming from with the one coordinate space. And I actually like to think of it in both ways. Sometimes I think, yeah, there are three coordinate spaces. Or sometimes there's just one. As far as vector transformation goes, there is only one. And there's only one. Okay, there's one. This is the mother of all coordinate spaces. And we're just transforming the vectors. I believe I have another tab that illustrates this right here. I've shown this in other videos. But you can see these are vectors. Okay, the origin is that white area in the middle. And can you see what these vectors are making up? Can you tell what shape these vectors are making up? Maybe if I come here and say show shape, you'll see it. It's an arrow. Okay, if I come back here, you can see the vectors right here coming to the vertices, making up the vertices of the arrow. And if I want to move this arrow around, I have to do a translation. Let's do it. Like that. You see how there's only one coordinate space? There's that one origin. All right, this matrix right here, this 4x4 matrix with all these sliders in here, makes up the model to world transformation matrix, if you would. But really, it's just they're all matrices, and we're, we're just converting all these vectors. I can scale it. You know, if, I'm, if I play my cards right, I could probably do a rotation. I don't think I'll get that far. But anyway, there's just one coordinate space, one set of vectors coming off the mother of all origins. Now going back to this tab, let's discuss what even makes up those other coordinate systems. The thing that makes up those other coordinate systems are the matrices. This matrix right here transforms the cube into the world. This matrix right here transforms the sphere into the world. And so we only apply this matrix to the cube, and we only apply this matrix to the sphere. But then we take this matrix and apply it to both of them, and we call that the world to view transformation matrix. But say I had 100 spheres and 100 cubes, or, or however, I have 100 objects in my world. I could have a different world to view transformation matrix for half of those objects. And then I'd use a, a second one for the other half. And then that would cause me to actually have two world coordinate spaces. Or maybe I cut, the, cut them up into groups of 25. So I take my 100 objects and say, you 25 have one, you other 25 have a different one, you other 25, so on. So, well, now I have four quote unquote world transformation matrices, but what I really have is just one global mother coordinate space, the white coordinate space here. Nothing racist, I promise. I'm sorry that sounds so racist. That's terrible. Um, awkward. And then one fourth of the objects would be in a different place of the world as the other fourth as a different place of the world as another fourth as a different place in the world as the other fourth. So you can almost think of these world to view transformation matrices as another model matrix that we apply to every single model. And that's why we can think of the world coordinate space as its own coordinate space, because we apply it to every single model. Once we do not apply or fail to apply, once we fail to apply this matrix to even one of the models, then we no longer have a world coordinate space. Or at least that model is not in that world. So <sighs> hopefully that cleared up some concepts. But maybe it messed you up too. I I hope it cleared it up, though.